And then um, the penalty phase stuff, I was working on that last weekend. Okay. Um, no, I Judge, we sent you <coughs> the charges. Oh, that's right. You did that. You did that. You did? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. I'll send them to you. I'll look. But you prepared them, though, didn't you? Yeah, I can send them again. Yeah. Well, let me look. They may be there. Did you send them to me directly or to my JA? Mr. Harmon sent them. No, we would have sent them to your JA, I believe. Judge. Okay. I, I think I have them saved on this computer right here, so I might go pull them off. Okay, that's fine. I started working on them as well. So, um, and I just did the charges. Mr. Harmon just told me to do the... That's fine. Okay. Um, and then I do believe it, it would be basic jury instructions for a murder case along with the other charges. And I do believe in a death penalty case, there's also an instruction to be read to the alternate jurors when they are released after closing, correct? Yes, right. there is. Okay. Yep. Did you provide that to me as well? I can provide it to you. We have it already. Okay. Well, I've, I've got it. I've got the form somewhere. Okay. Is there any other jury instruction that either of you, state or defense, is aware of at this stage of the proceedings we get to it, let's put it that way, when we get to the, um, the jury deliberations on the guilt phase, other than the special instruction with regards to the alternate jurors, is there any other special instruction at that no. juncture? No. Okay. No. Yeah. But, but you know, I, I don't know, the other day when we talked about the schedule, mm -hmm. we, it, it may be slightly delayed in the sense that, and we're trying to figure that out. Uh, I, I have a, uh, an expert witness that would be coming in, and I've been advised that it may not be until Monday morning for the state to rest. Okay. We just are not going to know, Your Honor, until right. I think probably halfway tomorrow because we have so much technical evidence sure. coming in tomorrow. That's but. fine. I just want to have the jury instructions That's fine. ready to go whenever it is that I'm going to instruct okay. the jury. Okay. That. So, do you want us to try to afford anything else to you? Not at this juncture. Let me see if okay. I can find what you sent and we'll go from okay. there. Okay. Are we ready to go? Can we just have one moment, Your Honor? Sure. I just want to make sure everything's organized here before we start. Okay, welcome back. We're ready to proceed. State call your next witness. State calls Officer Tiffany Morris. Do you sum swear or the testimony you're about to give this cause of the truth, the whole truth, but nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Just step up this way, have a seat on the stand. Afternoon, Judge. Good afternoon. Right, please support. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Would you please state your name and spell both names, please? Tiffany Morris, T-I-F-F-A-N-Y, Morris, M-O-R-R-I-S. And Officer o Officer Morris, how are you employed? Uh, Temple Terrace Police Department. Okay, and what is your role, role or position there? I'm currently a detective. Okay. And how long have you worked for the Temple Terrace Police Department, detective? Uh, Eleven and a half years. And are you a certified and sworn law enforcement officer pursuant to standards set by the state of Florida? Yes, sir. Back in May of 2014, what was your position with the Temple Terrace Police Department? I was the patrolman. All right. Do you recall an incident um, that you've recently reviewed CAD notes on involving a response to a 911 hang-up? Yes. And do you recall that afternoon... being assigned at approximately 17.22 or 5.22 p.m. to respond to an area at 124 Bullard Parkway? Yes. And when you received that call, where were you? I was on Fowler and Morris Bridge in Temple Terrace. And approximately how far is that from the intersection of 56 and Bush Bullard? It's <clears throat> approximately, I believe, five miles. Okay. Now, this was at 5.22 p.m. Was there... Um, uh, a higher amount of traffic due to the rush hour? Yes. And this was a Friday? Yes. So how long did your response take from Morris Bridge and Fowler to get to the 124 Bullard Parkway area? 
Approximately 10 minutes. And when you arrive there, um, are you familiar with that area around yes. there in that corner? Yes. You knew you were responding to a cell phone hang-up? Yes. So you knew you were not going like you would with a landline to a specific residence? Correct. So when you came into the area of 124 Bullard, and is 120, let me show you, states B dash B, B is in Bravo. If you look up over your right hand, right shoulder there. Um, <clears throat> this would be the intersection of Bullard and 56 here? Yes. And... There's a CVS there, and then this this would be 124 Bullard Parkway, is that right? Correct. The fire station? Yes. And there apparently is a cell tower in that area? Yes. When you arrived on the scene there um, at that intersection, can you just walk us through what you did and why, and why you did it? Okay. Um, as I approached passing um, the area there, I usually have my windows down looking for anyone in distress or anyone trying to flag me down. Um, the CVS parking lot, that's an entire plaza. I patrolled through the front of the plaza, also the rear of the plaza. We're coming around back onto Bullard, coming down this street here is uh, Sunnyside Road. If you need to stand up to point to something okay. on the screen, feel free. And if you want me to zoom into a certain area. If you can just zoom out a little bit. I'll zoom out. So there's, an, there's a whole plaza up here. So as I go through the front of the plaza and come patrol to the back of the plaza, come out, come on Bullard Parkway, come down this road here, which is Sunnyside Road, come around Shadow Lane. Oh, I'm sorry, it comes further down, but there's another, That's plaza. Right. There's I mean, another plaza right here as well. Okay. So I come around the post office, patrol through here, go to the rear of the post office, come out, and then go down 56th Street, pretty much patrolling all of the businesses in that area. Okay, and while you were doing that, you said you had your windows down? Yes. And were you listening in case you heard some kind of commotion or yes. noise or someone in distress? Yes. And this was in broad daylight, 530 approximately? Correct. Were you able to see? Did you have good visibility? Yes. And as you came back up 56th Street, because you've told us you came out in this area and you were going back up 56th, did you go into any of this area over here on this side of the road? Yes. Can you show us what you did over there? And that would be for the record on the west side of 56. Correct. So it's the west side. This is all businesses as well. Here, let me, um, let me pull that over closer to you so that you can not have to lean over so far. Go ahead. So I came through these businesses as well over here on the west side of 56th Street. Came back onto Bullard, headed west, and then there's another plaza up here, a Publix Plaza, where there's a Walgreens and some other businesses. Okay. And patrol through there. Approximately how much time do you think that all that patrolling took in that area? Um, four minutes or so, but even after I clear the call, I still maintain myself in the area just to see if anyone else pops up or anything comes available. Okay. And while you were going through that area at about 5.20, you see you're responding at 5.22. It says you arrived around 5.32. Does that sound about right? Yes. So if you arrived at 5.32, from 5.32 for the next 10 to 15 minutes that you're in that area, do you ever see a, um, um, well, let me, let me go back. Did you later become aware of a missing children's investigation or missing child investigation that was occurring later that night in the area? That happened much later. It was much later, going into the following day? Correct. That was around 11 p.m., I believe. Okay. And did you at some point get a description of Felicia Williams? Yes. Did you ever see any child that fit that description of Felicia Williams while you were in that area circulating? No. Never saw any small nine-year-old black girl on foot walking around. It's supposed to rush hour time, so it's heavily, you know, full of vehicles and people, you know, on foot. So I have nothing that was out of the ordinary. Okay, nothing stood out. No. Nothing that later when you saw her image that you said, oh, I saw that girl walking on the street or saw her somewhere. No. Okay. And as far as this call, you eventually did close it with not finding whatever the disturbance or whatever the call was about. Correct. May I have one moment, Your Honor? Yes. I'll tend to the witness, Your Honor. Cross-examination. The, um, good afternoon. Afternoon. Can you move that up, counsel? No, you don't have to. 
Um, I think you're indicating that the time that you were out in the general area of 5.20, 5.30 is rush hour? Correct. And um, so, and there were lots of cars, lots of people? Correct. You're basically looking to see if there's anything unusual going on, right? Correct. And so, um, a 100-pound 9-year-old, which would be a pretty big 9-year-old, uh, walking around in that area wouldn't necessarily be something that you would notice? No. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. Peter Rick. No, Your Honor. This would speak to Yes, Your Honor. Okay, you're free to go. Thank you, Judge Day. Who's your next witness? The state's going to recall Detective, or excuse me, Sergeant Kerry Spaulding. Okay. <coughs> so you remain under oath from yesterday, right? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Sergeant, thank you for coming back. Absolutely. Um, yesterday we were talking about the investigation of this, uh, what ended up being a nine-year-old girl that was found in the waters along the shoreline of the uh, north side of the Courtney Campbell Causeway in yes, your sir. jurisdiction. Yes, sir. All right. And we talked about you going over to Temple Terrace PD and coming back. Um, let me ask you, was there a time... Um, after that, after the 17th, that you went back out to the causeway with Detective Rulin and I believe Sergeant De Detective Sergeant or Sergeant Detective Monte. Yes, sir. And do you know what date that was you went back out? I thought it was on the 20th. Okay. So that would have been Tuesday. the Monday, or no, the Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay. So Tuesday, um, two or three days after the body was located. Yes, sir. Okay. And when you went back out with these other two officers, did you all conduct a search of the Courtney Campbell Causeway? Yes, we did. Can you describe to the jurors what you all did? Um, we drove out there. Um, I think Detective Rulin and I were together in the same car. Um, and we drove again slowly um, down the, um, the north side of the causeway again, and then also the south side of the causeway. And then there were times that different garbage cans, we would again stop and get out and look, um, look around in the, the grassy area okay. for, for any objects. And did you also take note of the shoreline itself on both sides of the causeway? Yes, sir. And when you were searching, do you recall if you were driving or if Detective Ruling was driving? Or? I'm sorry, I don't remember. All right, but the three of you were together in one car? I, I believe Sergeant Monty may have been in a separate vehicle. Okay. We usually didn't ever go three together. All right. So he would have been in a separate vehicle and you and Detective Rulin were in your own vehicle? Yes, sir. All right. When you went to the Tampa side of the Courtney Campbell Causeway, did you search both the north and the south shorelines of that side of the causeway? From what I can remember, we did, yes. And the, uh, any garbage receptacles you would have come across or garbage yes. cans? whatever was in there. Was did there. you find any children's clothing? No. Did you find any suitcases or see any remnants of a suitcase or anything that would have thought you would have thought would have belonged in your experience to a suitcase? No, sir. I'm going to show you what's been marked as states L A. That's in, as in Lima and Alpha, one through sixteen. Okay. And I'm just asking: Have you previously seen the photographs? Yes, sir. Are these? Do these photographs depict the scene of where? Um, Felicia Williams' body was recovered along the north side of the causeway, and as it appeared on May, 6, May 17th, excuse me, 2014. Yes, sir. And in fact, are you in one of the photographs? Yes. Okay. And does it depict the area that we were talking about yesterday um, where you had testified cars could pull um, to the south side of the north side access road, which would put it across the access road from where the body was found? Yes, sir. And that area, the area of uh, trees and bushes that you said gave seclusion to that area from um, drivers on the Courtney Campbell Causeway? Yes, sir. And all the photographs accurately depict those areas as they appeared that day? Yes, they do. Your Honor, we would tender states L-A, 1 through 16. Any objection? No, Your Honor. Admitted. States L-A, 1. 
Sergeant, if you can tell us, um, do you see the area that we were just talking about, the trees and bushes that cause or give seclusion to the area where the body was located? Yes, sir. Do you want me to? Yeah, up? if you can stand up and, and point to them. Yes, this area right here. All right, so this area that I've drawn a circle around? Yes, sir. All right. And is this approximately over here, the area on the other side of that car, over here in the water where the body was located? Yes. And so if looking at this photograph, is the camera facing eastbound towards Tampa? Yes, it is. All right. And these cars here would be the westbound lane coming back towards Clearwater? Yes. And I'll just draw an arrow in that direction. Is that accurate? Correct. Okay. And all of these are all... Clearwater Police Department cars? It is. They are, yes. Okay. These plants along here, are those all mangroves? Yes. <clears throat> States L-A-2. Now, this photograph, would the camera angle in this photograph be facing back to the west towards Clearwater? Yes, it is. And, in fact, is this the north side access road? It is. And you told us earlier this is a one-way road in the direction of that arrow, westbound? Correct. But when you came down that road, you were coming this way. Yes, you were coming eastbound. Correct. Right. This area here, is this that shoulder on the south side of the north access road that we were talking about where cars could park against the trees and the bushes that give the seclusion to that area? Yes. And then over here, we see a little strip of crime scene tape right there. Is that accurate? Correct. And so this would be the area over here where Ms. Williams' body was found. Yes, sir. Okay. And you had testified yesterday to some debris that was found over here. And I don't know if you can see the, um, the evidence markers. Yes, sir. For a cigarette butt and some condom wrappers that were located in that area. Yes, and I think there's a Burger King. And a Burger King stuff. wrapper. And you had indicated that this is a high-traffic area of fishermen and other people. And I think council had brought up to you that um, frequently people go out there for amorous purposes. Yes. Okay. Um, I think you also told us that the items, you couldn't tell how long they had been there or what relevance they may have, but they were collected. Correct. States L-A-3. Just to draw your attention, this appears to be crime scene tape over here? Yes, it is. All right. So this would be the area over here where Felicia's body was found? Um, yes. Maybe a little bit further a down little this further way? Where, yes. Okay. And this is that same shoulder area we were just talking about and looking at? Yes. Okay. States L A 4. And I think now maybe we can see better the area where Felicia's body was located. Yes. But it is directly across from all of these trees over here on the left side of the photograph that gives seclusion to that area. Is that right? Yes, sir. And would it be fair to say that there is an open area for a quite a distance on both sides going to the east and the west where there are no trees and nothing to give seclusion from the drivers on the Court and Campbell Causeway. Yes. There are some um, tall palm trees that you, you can see right through the palm trees because they're really tall and the, they're very narrow. Okay. States L-A-5, pretty much the same area, but now we see evidence markers here. Is that right? Yes, sir. <coughs> States L-A-6. Now, in this photograph, is this still the north side access road? Yes, it is. But is the camera now facing eastbound towards Tampa? And do you know who this person is? Yes. Who is that? That's me with blonde hair. That's you with blonde hair? Yes, sir. Back then? Okay. <laughs> Just had to try a little difference? A little different, okay. yes. <laughs> and I, it looks as if, and, and we can zoom in, but a bicyclist may be approaching on the access road? Yes, sir. 
But this is that shoulder area we were just discussing, and then this is that area of foliage and trees? Yes. And we can see in this photograph, there's a pretty good distance here along the uh, south border to the north side access road heading towards the east where there is no foliage or cover. Yes, sir. States L-A-7. This is just a shot of the area where Felicia's body was recovered. Yes, sir. States L-A-8. In this photograph, can we see close-ups of these boulders and rocks in this area? Yes. And this would be the tarp with Miss Williams' body? Yes, sir. Going back across on the south side of the north side access road, states L-A-9. Is this, again, a photograph of the area where um, several items were marked for photograph or in collection purposes? Correct. States L-A-10. Are the items now visible? Yes, they are. All right. And you talked about a cigarette butt. Is that that item at number two? It is. And is this one of the condom wrappers? It is, yes. And I believe you can barely see a Burger King emblem there on that item. Correct. It looks like a crushed cup. And again, looking at those items, do they appear to have some weathering as if they may have been there for quite a while? Yes, they look like they were driven over. States L-A-11. At number four, the evidence marker in the middle of the photograph, is this another condom wrapper? Yes, sir, it is. States L-A-12. Is that just a close-up of the cigarette butt and the Burger King package? It is. L-A-14. Same debris. Okay. And was there some kind of a plastic that was running along the base of the the trees and the bushes on that side of the causeway? Yeah, it looked like they the... were doing some kind of construction. Okay. And then just the last two photographs states L-A-15. Was this a power reading station or pole just to the west of the crime scene? Yes, it was. And was it noted and photographed for uh, reference yes. purposes for a later time to be able to reference that area? Correct. And L-A-16 is just a close-up of the label that's on that box? Yes, it is. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. One 
that uh, Mr. Harmon referenced this area down here. You may need to flip Oh, wait a minute. It. This area down here, right? You see that? I'm sorry. Can I turn it around? I can, I can try to turn it around. Okay. Okay. Hold on. There we go. Let me clear this. Okay. I believe Mr. Harmon referenced this area. I'm very good at this. Right <laughs> up in here, right? Correct. As being an area where there's palm trees and not a lot of, of, of mangroves. Um, yes, there's not there's not a lot of there's no coverage over there. And and this is still on the north side access road, right? Yes. Okay, and what is it what direction are we looking at? We are looking now towards Tampa. Okay. In the so we're looking east. Correct. Okay. And I thought he said something about south. Uh, was he referencing anything south? Is there something to the south as you're looking east? Or, or did I misunderstand? I'm sorry. I don't remember anything about south. Okay. All right. So, so we're looking east, right? Correct. Okay. And when you're suggesting that uh, the area... This area right here, where you're standing, offers some seclusion, right? Yes. And then you indicated that um, many other areas along the causeway do not offer seclusion. They have palm trees and it's open, right? Yes. But you're not suggesting to the jury that this is the only area along the causeway that offers seclusion? No. This okay. is one, one of seven. One area, and then I remembered um, another small patch. Okay. Can you, can you sit here today and say how many areas along that path actually offer seclusion? As I've driven back and forth, I remember seeing two. Okay. This one and another one that's, I want to say it, mile marker 146. Okay. So there's at least two along the Clearwater side of the north access road. Yes. Are there others on the Hillsborough side that you're aware of? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Now, you indicated that you looked both at the... Um, When you came back with, with Rulin, um, and you weren't sure, sure if you were driving or he was driving? Yes. Okay. Uh, you, so then I assume you don't recall whether or not you were in your car or his car? I don't remember on that separate day. Okay. You remember whether or not the car was scraped up on that day? It still would have been. No, 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 no. Did, did it come in contact with mangroves or trees and, and got... You know, end up with additional scrapes as a result of you guys driving that day. No. Okay. And you said that did you guys uh, drove both the north side and the south side of the Courtney Campbell Causeway. Yes. And you stopped and you looked in, in, in uh, trash bins along the way. Yes. And you sort of scouting the, the water and, and, and the ground between the water and, 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 and the, the access road. Correct. Okay, as you're driving. Driving, and then we would stop and get out. And sure. Uh, and you did um, the north side, um, uh, on the Clearwater side, and also on the south side on the Clearwater side, right? Both sides on the yeah. Clearwater side, yes. Did you then go over to the Hillsborough side? Yes, I do believe we did go over there towards um, the boat ramp area. To the boat ramp area. Mm -hmm. Now, the boat ramp area is on the north side of the causeway. Yes, it is, on the okay. north side, Tampa. Okay. So you, so you believe you went to the, the boat ramp area of the causeway, which is uh, along the access road on the north side of the causeway? Yes. Okay. What about the south side of the Hillsborough Causeway? As far as I remember, we checked both, but... Not sure? Not 100% sure okay. exactly where we went. Okay. Did you know... At the time when, when, when you went out um, to, 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 to do your search, do you recall what day that was? I thought it was the 20th, okay. the second time we went out there. Were you familiar out. with any reports from NOAA at that point in time as to the likely uh, location of where the body had been put in the water? No. Okay. Uh, so you didn't know whether or not there was, there was a report suggesting that the southeast side is where it was placed in the water? No. Okay. Had you had that information, you presumably would definitely have gone to the southeast side. Yes. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Hey, Redirect? Yes. Are you aware 
of a no report that suggests that it's just as probable or possible that the body was deposited where it was located? I, I didn't read any no reports. Okay. Um, I want to, if I can, because you're, you're saying you thought it was 520 that you all went out. I'm showing you a report by Detective Rulin. Okay. Where he gives a date, and then he references your search of the Courtney Campbell Causeway. Okay. Then, yes, it's, I'm sorry, it is the 19th then. Okay, so that would have been Monday. Not, okay, I did not write a supplement you on it. You didn't write a report. Apologize. Okay. But Detective Rulin's report does refresh your memory yes. as to that? Okay. Now, as far as getting scratches on your car, you had already got your car scratched up going to the scene when the body was recovered. You told us about that, yes. right? Yes. When you went back out there uh, two days later, so you were out there on the 17th when Felicia's body was found in the water. Yes. You went out there two days later with Monty and Rulin. Did you take precautions on that day to make sure your car didn't get scratched again? We would have been, but again, I don't remember 100% if I was actually driving or if Detective Rulin was driving. Okay. One of us was driving together in a vehicle. But Do you remember if you went back on the north side access road, back down to where the victim's body was found? Yes, the, we would have gone back search? down there. Okay. But you don't know if he would have taken precautions to avoid the scratches or even if he got scratches on his car? I, I don't know. Okay. Um, Where Felicia's body was located is just past the two-mile mark heading from Clearwater towards Tampa. Is that right? Yes. So it was found just just past two miles from the Clearwater mainland? Yes. So almost all the way, if you're heading from Tampa, almost all the way across the Courtney Campbell Causeway? Yes. Right. You indicated that when counsel was asking you, that you're not saying there aren't other areas where there is seclusion between um, the Courtney Campbell Causeway and that north side access road. Seclusion meaning there being foli foliage like uh, trees or plants that would give seclusion. Yes. You indicated you know of two, and you even gave a mile marker. Right? Correct. But is this the only area of seclusion where you located a nine-year-old girl's body in the water. Yes, sir. Okay. Just going back real fast to states L-A-6. Council had shown you that photograph. Yes. And I was, he brought up that I was asking you earlier about this area here um, and that there's no trees or foliage between here, right here, and all the way down this way. Correct. Right? So when I was asking that, do you remember that I was asking you that this area over here would be south of the north access road? Okay. Yes. It's the Yes, the north access road. So this is the south side. That you're standing on in the, the photo. Side. Yes. You're standing on the south side. Yes. So all of this area here would all be on the south side of this road. Yes. And I know it can get a little confusing. The road is an east-west road going both eastbound and westbound. But this over here would be the north side of that road. Yes. And this over here would be the south side of that road. Correct. So, do you believe I was using the term south to denote this area south of the north access road? Yes. Okay. And the reason we're calling this the north access road is that it's on the northern side of the Courtney Campbell Causeway. Correct. Right. I'll tender, oh, well, I'm, I have nothing else you want to do. All right, may this witness be excused again? <clears throat> Yes, you're right. Okay. Try it one more time. Okay. All right. <clears throat>
Yes, Your Honor. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, I might have one over there. Yeah, one moment, Your Honor. I yes. don't want to backtrack over the game over the Mr. Carroll, I want to take your uh, attention back to Saturday morning, May 17, 2014. You've already told us <clears throat> you got a phone call at home, I believe, from Corporal Zimmerman or some other supervisor, and you responded to the Temple Terrace Police Department? That's correct. Okay. And did you at some point direct Detective Kelly to go to the victim's residence on Ida Street in Tampa? Yes, sir, I did. And why did you ask him to go there? At that point in the investigation uh, was early, and because of the fact that we hadn't found uh, Felicia at that point, I felt it was important to go back over all of the uh, witnesses that they talked to the night before. Just trying to gain any information you could that may assist in the missing persons report? Yes. And at that point, you were investigating this as a missing or endangered child, correct? Yes. You didn't have um, any evidence of homicide at that point, correct? Correct. Did you yourself travel uh, to a baseball park at Martin Luther King and 22nd Street in the city of Tampa, the Belmont, Belmont Park baseball park? Yes, I did. And was that near I the Ida Street address where the victim lived with her mother and sisters? Yes, about half a mile away. And when you arrived there, um, did you go around and, and look for her in the park and ask people in the park if they knew her? There was a lot of people at the park that morning. A Were lot of baseball ba games going on? A lot of baseball games going on. I uh, thought that it was probably a pretty safe bet to maybe go in the area of the concession stand where most people were hanging around, and I spoke to a few of the uh, people uh, working at the concession stand. Uh, several of them actually knew Felicia uh, and said that they hadn't seen her there that morning, that she quite frequented that area um, on the weekend days. Okay. Did you that day or early that morning contact a company called, it's known as ATSOL? Yes, sir. It's uh, American uh, uh, Traffic Solutions, I believe is their, their name. Okay. And is that a company that provides red light camera equipment to cities around the United States? Yes. And did Temple Terrace have a contract with ATSOL for red light cameras at certain intersections within the city? Yes, we did. And were the purpose of the cameras to enforce uh, red light, um, the red lights, I guess, in the intersections, and to ticket people who violated red lights or caused red light infractions? That is correct. And were you familiar at that time with this company that contracted to enforce violations of red lights at these intersections in the city? Yes, I was. And were you familiar with the red light cameras that they had and what intersections they had red light cameras at? Mostly, yes. And before that date, had you utilized those cameras in other criminal investigations that you had conducted? Yes, I had. So this was a resource you were reaching out to them to try to get uh, red light camera images and video? Yes. And at that time... What was your intent as far as trying to obtain images or video from the red light cameras? My ultimate plan at that point was to capture the video, the raw video from those cameras, uh, to go through all the intersections that are near the area of 8910 Tanglewood uh, to see if I could see uh, somebody with the same description as Felicia walking uh, through those intersections. And because you had dealt with that company and their cameras in the past, were you familiar with how their systems worked and how they operated? Basically, yes. Okay. And you've already indicated you knew where some of their cameras were located? Yes, sir. And the cameras, 
how do they actually work to catch violators or enforce red light violations? They're installed by um, American Traffic Solutions uh, for that purpose that you mentioned earlier of uh, looking for uh, red light violations or right turn violations at certain intersections. Uh, it's my, my uh, understanding that there are motion detectors on the roadway uh, which are picked up by the cameras. There's basically two cameras at the intersection. One takes moving raw video and the other takes uh, still shots when a vehicle enters the, uh, the violation area of after the light turns red. Okay. And if they enter that area, do they trigger that camera? The one camera is always going 24-7. Right. The, the other camera is triggered by a violation which takes a specific image of the tag of the vehicle uh, that can be seen clearly where the raw video it can't be seen clearly it's just a raw video uh, continuously running so the one camera that's going to take the still shot of the car the car's tag if it violates the red light that's only going to take a still photograph and it's only going to do that if, if someone violates the right away on the red light I'm not a thousand percent sure uh, of exactly what you said there because I know along with the violation usually goes a 12 second or 15 second continuous uh, moving uh, of that vehicle so that you can see that vehicle move through that area. I'm not sure if that camera does both of those for the 12 seconds or if it just takes the, uh, the actual raw image. All right, but there's another camera that's running 24-7 and collecting video image from those intersections. That's correct. Is that the camera and the system you were interested in? Yes. Right. And in the past when you had obtained, had you obtained video like that in the past from that company? Several times, yes. Okay. And did they forward that to you to date and time specific uh, requests? Yes, sir. And the videos that came to a certain date and time, were they date and time stamped? The files are time stamped for the period of time that, of the video of that the they video. send me. Yeah. So it's going to give you the, say the, the offense occurred on January 1st, I'm just going to pick a random date, January 1st of 2017, and you're looking um, for the time period of 3 o'clock in the afternoon to 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So you're going to get a video or maybe two or three files of videos for that hour long period from that date and they're going to give you say 3 o'clock to 3.20, 3.20 to 3.40, 3.40 to 4 o'clock. Is that right? That's correct. They're going to give you the start and end time as well as the date for that section of video they're sending you. Yes sir. And you're going to get the videos in sections like that as far as digital files from the company? Yes sir. And in your experience, based on your prior investigations, are the date and time stamp indicators accurate to real time, to Eastern Standard Time? Yes, they are. And these same cameras are used to present evidence in traffic court for red light violations, correct, as far as date and time? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, in this case, what intersections were you interested in? Well, I would have been interested in every intersection, but unfortunately we only have cameras at two, ex uh, two intersections near that vicinity. That uh, have cameras on it? Yes, sir. Okay. Let me show you, um, make sure I get a satellite image that has both of these in it. This is states B. Dash C. He is in Bravo, C is in Charlotte. You can look up there over your right shoulder, and I'm going to zoom in. Okay. Do you see the intersection of Bullard and 56? Yes, sir. Okay. And is that this intersection here? Yes, it is. Is that one of the intersections you were interested in? Yes, it is. And it's one of the reasons because the route looks it's just to the uh, east of there? Yes. Or southeast? Correct. And did you know from experience whether there were um, red light cameras, video and, and um, still photo cameras that were uh, maintained there by ATSOL? 
there are two of them at that intersection, yes. Okay. And then going southbound on 56 down to the intersection, <coughs> this intersection here, River Hills Drive and 56, were you familiar with that intersection and whether ATSOL SOL maintained cameras on that intersection? Yes, sir. And did they? Yes, sir. They have one there. All right. And did you make requests for those two intersections as far as uh, video imaging for the date of May 16, 2014? Yes, I did. And you indicated you would have liked to have had images from other intersections, but you knew those were two that had cameras. Yes, sir. Is that right? Yes. Right. <clears throat> now, had you been briefed about Ebony Wiley and her involvement in reporting Felicia Williams as being missing? Yes, I had. When, when you came on the duty that morning? Yes, sir. And had you met or spoke with her that morning? Uh, not that morning, no. Okay. And around 1 p.m., did you respond to some area on North 17th Street in the city of Tampa? Yes, I did. And did you respond there in reference to her? Yes, I did. And why were you responding there? I wanted to re-interview Ebony in reference to the events leading up to this interview. Now, the city of Temple Terrace's police department, is it... North of Bullard Bush on yep. 56th Street? Yes, sir. How far north, and I'm just referring you to the intersection we just looked at, how far north of there is the, the uh, police department? My guess would be about a mile. Okay. So when you travel down to North 17th Street in the city of Tampa, did you go south on 56th Street, or did you use 56th Street as a route? Sir, I don't recall that morning. Okay. All right. Going down 56th, would that be one way to head over into East Tampa? Yes, it would. To North 17th Street. If you were heading south on 56, would River Hills Drive, if you headed west on River Hills Drive, would that take you towards North 17th Street or East Tampa? That would be a way to go, yes. And what address did you respond to on North 17th Street? I would have to refer to my notes. Let me see if I can refresh your memory. Was okay. it 4405? Yes. Okay. And was someone with you when you went there? Uh, Corporal Staley was with me at the time. All right. Corporal Robert Staley? Yes, sir. And did you did he go by the name Rob? Yes. And was he working with you at least on the 16th on this investigation? On the 17th, yes. I'm sorry, on the 17th. Yes, sir. Thank you. And why did you go to that address in reference to Ms. Wiley? Uh, we wanted to re-interview her. And when you arrived there, um, do you remember approximately when you arrived there? I'm thinking about 1.30, 1 o'clock, between 1 and 1.30. Did you locate Ms. Wiley? Yes. Was she there at home? Uh, she was there. And did you end up going, or did she in fact invite you inside of her residence? Yes, she did. And did she, during your contact with her inside of your residence, did she make some statement to you that caused you some concern based on what you knew she had told law enforcement before that? Yes. And based on that, um, did you make some request of her? Yes, I asked her if she would come down to the police department so we could re-interview her. And at that point, did you place her under arrest or put her into custody? No, sir, just gave her a ride down. All right, so you didn't... Take her there or force her to go there? No. All right. And did the statement she made to you, did it deal with the gender of Vivian? Yes. In fact, was she telling you that Vivian was a man? That was her exact words. Vivian is a man? Yes. And did that catch you off guard? Somewhat. Were you somewhat confused by that statement? Some, somewhat. Okay. Um, and when you got to the Temple Terrace Police Department... Uh, was she asked to come into the police department? Yes. And did was she escorted to some room inside of the police department? Yes, to our interview room. And did you and Corporal Staley then interview her? Yes, we did. During that interview, did the name Trevor come up? Yes. And later through your investigation, did you associate that name to this defendant, Granville Ritchie? Yes, we did. 
during the interview with Miss Wiley, um, once the name Trevor had come up, let me back up a little bit. At that point, did you know that Gloria Bernice Gibson was the renter, or I guess the leasee of the uh, 8910 apartment 721 residence in the Doral Oaks apartments? Yes. That had been determined by going to the um, leasing office there at Doral Oaks? I'm not, I'm not sure how that was determined. But somewhere. it had been determined? Yes. All right. And were you aware that Ms. Gibson had been interviewed at her job down in Bradenton? Yes. And by doing research on Ms. Gibson and anybody who may be related to her, were you able to come up with a photograph of the defendant, Granville Ritchie, a, a driver's license photograph? Yes. And did you show that photograph to Ebony Wiley? Yes, I did. Did she identify that photograph as the person she knew as Trevor? Yes, she did. During that interview, did you ask her if she would consent to you taking a DNA sample from her? Yes, she did. And how did you go about doing that? Uh, with our normal procedure of getting a, a DNA swab, okay. uh, putting on gloves, uh, taking her DNA from her cheek, and putting it back into the sterile container. All right. Is that commonly called a buckle swab? Yes, sir. And that's B-U-C-C-A-L for the record? Yes, it is. All right. And are there kits that come that law enforcement use for collection of buckle swabs from individuals? Yes, there are. And does that involve some kind of a paper packaging that contains a sterile swab? Yes. You open the package and you wear gloves and you remove the swab and then rub it around inside the person's, inside their cheek to get skin cells on it? Yes, sir. And then it's put back into some kind of a package? The same package you came out of. All right. And is it sealed? Yes. And was that impounded? Yes, it was. Was it later transported to the Florida Department of Law Enforcement's crime laboratory here in Tampa? Yes, it was. And submitted to the biology section for DNA analysis? Yes, it was. Okay. How long did that interview last? That interview lasted from about 1.56 p.m. on that date till about uh, 4.30, between 4.30 and 4.45 p.m. All right. During that interview, um, were there multiple times when Miss Wiley was allowed, left alone in the room and allowed to use her phone? Yes. And did she use her phone? Yes, yeah, she did. From what you saw and you knew? Yes. Okay. Based, well, let me back up. Towards the end of that interview, and based on information received from Miss Wiley, were efforts made to contact Granville Ritchie? Yes. And at that time, you had, by having her identify that photo, knew that his real name was Granville Ritchie? Yes. Right. Through your investigation, did you develop, and did you have at that time, a phone number associated to Mr. Ritchie? Yes, we did. And was that a uh, 727 number? I believe it ended in 3413. Okay, 288-3414? Yes. If you need to look at your report, please do. I, don't I can want give to... you the exact phone number. Yes, yes if you could. And if you need to refresh your memory at any time, feel free. Just let us know that you're doing it or show us that you're doing it. phone number we had for him was 727-288-3413. 3413 or 3414? I have... 3413 on this piece of paper. Okay. Is that a note that you made? I can check on the police report also. If you could, please. On the police report, it says 727-288-3413. All right. Let's check. I may have it wrong, actually. Okay. Yes, you are correct. 3413. My mistake. So 727-288-3413 was the number you had associated to Mr. Ritchie? Yes, sir. Okay. Did you have a number associated for Gloria Gibson? Yes. And what was that? That number was 813-793-5727. And did you have Miss Wiley's number as 813-900-1494? That's correct. Okay. 
Was that phone number, the 727-288-3413 number, was that utilized to contact him by uh, Corporal Staley? Yes. And did he answer and identify himself? Yes. Prior to that interview with Ebony Wiley that begins at about 1.30, or a little past, I guess, because you were there in her residence at 1.30? Yes, sir. So that by the time it started, was it closer to 2? Yes, I believe it was. Okay. Prior to that interview, did you or any of the investigators have any indication that a man had been involved in the case at all, that there had been a man in that apartment with Felicia Williams? Not prior, no. And she had been reported missing at approximately 10 to 10.15, somewhere in that area? Yes, sir. That would have been the night before? Correct. So about 14 hours had elapsed from the time she was reported missing? Yes, sir. Approximately? Approximately. Now, when Corporal Staley made contact with the defendant, I don't want to get into the hearsay of the, the conversation, but um, after talking to the defendant, did Corporal Staley or someone else from Temple Terrace make a request of the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office to send deputies to a location near 301 at a, to a Winn-Dixie shopping plaza on 301? No, sir. We sent our own units. You sent your own units? Yes. Were you aware that Hillsborough County deputies did go to that location to assist? No, I wasn't aware of that. I thought it was our Temple Terrace shoots. Okay. And that may be true, but I'm just asking if you're aware of other of Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office deputies responding there to, to assist. No, I'm not. Now, you and Corporal Staley are not the only detectives involved in this investigation at this point, right? That's correct. There's other detectives and supervisors, including at the time Sergeant Mike Lowell. Yes. And you're all acting to some extent independently because you're trying to chase down leads in different directions? Independently on directions from supervisors, yes. Supervisors, right. Um, and when I say, I didn't mean to say leads, I mean different um, tasks that had to be completed in reference to your investigation. That's correct. As far as you know, at that location, that one, Dixie, at Williams and 301, when law enforcement responded out there, did Mr. Ritchie ever show up? No, he did not. <coughs> and based on that, did Corporal Staley make additional efforts to contact Mr. Ritchie? Yes, he did. And did the fact that Mr. Ritchie had not shown up to meet law enforcement at 301 in Williams, did that come up or during that conversation, that, as far as what you saw and heard? Yes. Did that fact concern you and Corporal Staley? Yes. And around 4 p.m., was Corporal Staley able to make contact with Mr. Ritchie? Yes, he was. And were arrangements made for Mr. Ritchie to meet Hillsborough County Sheriff's deputies at some location on Hillsborough Avenue? Yes. And was that an advanced discount auto parts? Yes, it was. Now, when contact was made with him, did you know where he was at that point? I did, I did not know. And in fact, at some later time, did Mr. Ritchie show up at the advanced discount auto parts on Hillsborough? Yes. And was he escorted to the Temple Terrace Police Department? Yes, he was. And at that point, was he under arrest? No, he was not. Was he in custody? No, he was not. As far as you know, did he voluntarily come down to the Temple Terrace Police Department? Yes, he did. And was the car he driving, was it left at the uh, auto parts store in Hillsboro? Yes, it was. And did the defendant arrive there at the Temple Terrace Police Department sometime around 4.45 p.m.? Yes, sir. Approximately? Yes. And when he arrived, was he also escorted into an interview room? Yes. And was that a different area than where Ebony Wiley was? 
it was the same interview room, but Ebony Wiley had been moved to a different interview room okay. at that time. Was that before Mr. Ritchie had arrived? Yes. And were they kept separate? Yes. Was Mr. Ritchie interviewed? Yes, he was. And who interviewed him? Myself and Corporal Staley. Um, was that interview recorded? Yes, it was. And how was it recorded? Uh, it was recorded on uh, a video from a remote location. And was there audio? Yes, there to was. To that video? Yes, sir. Is that a built-in system within that um, interview room? Yes, it is. Approximately how long was the interview? Uh, the interview was from about 4.45 till about 7 p.m. Okay. Was the recording of the interview, this video audio recording, was it captured on some type of a portable medium, electronic medium, like a disc or a, a thumb drive at, at some point? Onto a DVD, yes. A DVD. And was it downloaded onto discs or thumb drives from there? It was downloaded from a digital recorder to a DVD, and the DVD was placed in evidence. Okay. And was a DVD or a copy of that DVD uh, provided to the state attorney's office here in Hillsborough County? Yes, it was. I'm going to show you what's been marked as state's Q, as in Quebec. Do you recognize this object? Yes, I do. And is that a DVD disc? Yes, it is. And have you reviewed this disc and its contents? Yes, I did. Does it contain an electronic copy of the audio video recording of the interview of Granville Ritchie that occurred on May 17th, 14? Yes, it does. Is it an accurate copy of that, and does it appear to reflect that um, interview and the recording of it as it, as it occurred on the uh, 17th of May, 2014. Yes, sir. And have you initialed this, having previously listed, listened to it? Yes, I to have. To identify it. Your Honor, I tender states Q. Yes. States Q. No, Okay. Um, it'll be admitted. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, the jury... Um, I'm assuming you're ready to publish that exhibit? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. I've been told this is, what, about an hour and a half, Mr. Harmon? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. So let's go ahead and take our afternoon comfort break right now so that way you don't have to interrupt the um, playing of the next exhibit, okay? So we will be back with you all shortly. All right. Very excellent.